Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I am Ayala Storm, based in London in the UK, and I am doing a workshop showing you some things you can do to decorate a bra. So I've got all my sparkly things laid out here, so I thought what I would do is chat you through some tips and techniques, and I'll show you the kind of results that you can achieve using these different methods. The first thing I would say when you're thinking about how you want to decorate a bra is whether it's for a stage act or just a bit of striptease for fun, think about the kind of mood that you want to create with it. Is it really high energy and fun and you want something very blingy and brightly coloured? Or do you want to go for more of kind of a sultry vibe because that'll inform the kind of methods and the kind of materials that you want to use? So the main things that I'm going to cover in this little mini workshop are rhinestoning, I'm also going to talk about adding trims, fringe, that sort of thing to your bra. Um, I'm also going to go over painting and adding glitter. And finally, I'll round up with a couple of tips on modifying your bra for quick release. So if you're using it for, again, a stage act or for a striptease, making it a bit easier to flip out of. So I'm going to start with what is probably my favourite topic because I'm a magpie, and that is rhinestoning. So there's so many different effects that you can get with using rhinestones. They come in all different shapes, sizes and colours. Um, there's two main types of rhinestones that you can get. You can get hot fix or non-hot fix. And what the different... Go. Dude. <laughs> Stop it. So there are two main types of rhinestones that you can get and those are hot fix and non-hot fix and the difference is hot fix rhinestones come with a layer of glue already on the back of them and you need a special tool that basically heats up and melts the glue and then you just stick them on so the advantages of that are that it is less messy but obviously you do need the tool and um, there's an element of danger because heat is involved so for that reason I'm really accident prone I don't use that I prefer to use the non hot fix rhinestones um, which means that you need to purchase additional glue one thing I will say is do not use a hot glue gun. Seems like a great idea, but they will all just pop off really easily. So you want to avoid that. There's lots of different glues available on the market that are good for sticking down rhinestones. One that is very popular is E6000. However, it is really toxic. So I wouldn't recommend that you use that at all. Um, the one that I prefer to use is Gemtac. I'm going to do the YouTuber thing. So that's what it looks like. Um, I just get it from Amazon, but you could pick it up from um, craft supply stores, that kind of thing. And if I show you, this comes out as a white glue. Mine's running out. <laughs> it comes out white, but what happens is it dries down clear. So even if you get it around the edge of the rhinestone, um, it's not going to show up from, from stage, no one's going to see it. And in fact, I find that when you use the glue, you almost want to have a little bit too much so that it wraps around the edge of the rhinestone and helps to stick it on. So I'm going to show you some examples of different patterns and different ways you can use rhinestones. Um, one of them is this one here. So basically what I've done is covered the entire cups of the bra with silver rhinestones. So that gives you a really cool kind of contrast against this black bodysuit. Um, looks like disco boobs. <laughs> so it's a really fun way to jazz up what was otherwise, this was just a plain bodysuit from I think H&M. Um, and I also added some fringe to the bottom which we can talk about in a little bit. This bra over here, you can see I use different colours in rows and what I like to do is to do this kind of fade effect so starting with them really close together and then gradually spacing them apart. Some people really like to plan out what they're gonna do I prefer to just whack it on and see what it looks like because I'm wild um, but if you're a planner something like a white pencil is really really useful because what you can do I'll show you on this bra what you can do is basically pop some little dots on, you can see that, so you can draw out your pattern, decide if you like it and then you can 
go ahead and, and stick it down if that's what you've decided that you want to do. Like I said at the start, the kind of colours that you use versus the colour of your costume will give you different effects. So obviously with these two, I've used stones that are a different colour to the costume because I wanted them to really pop. These were for quite energetic, jazzy routines, so I wanted them to be very bright and very eye-catching. If you want more of a sultry vibe, what I'd recommend is what I've done here. So I've used rhinestones that are the same colour as the brass. So if you can see close up, you can see all the individual stones. And what I did with this one is kind of copied the pattern of the lace, but you can see from further away, you can't actually see the stones. And that's kind of the effect that I wanted so that when I move, it shimmers and it sparkles, but there's not that obvious I'm covered in bling effect. This bra kind of has all the effects that I'm going to teach you today, um, so I'll keep referring back to it, but you can see in some places I've used the same colour as the, the underneath, and then, so there's a purple one just here that you can hardly see, but you can see them sparkling, and then in other places I've used contrasting colours because I wanted them to look like seashells and barnacles and that sort of thing. So I'm going to stop there on rhinestones because I could literally do an entire tutorial on them <laughs> alone, so we're going to move on. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about is different trims and jewellery and other accessories that you can use to bling up your bra. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is fringe. We all love fringe. Uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of shimmying, especially in a routine, fringe is brilliant for that. It really shows up movement and it just adds a little bit of pizzazz. So yeah, particularly if you're going to be shimmying, it looks absolutely fab and you can get various different lengths. You can get glittery or you can get plain. Lots of different colours, so it's, it's really fun stuff. So I'm going to go back to my bodysuit here that I showed you earlier this has fringe around the legs. The dance that I made this for has a lot of booty shimmy so that was perfect to go around the legs for that. So again I've used a contrasting colour because I wanted a very sort of punchy effect um, but you can use the same colour as your costume so that it's a bit more subtle and it gives you that kind of swingy movement without being really in your face so that's quite a fun thing to do. And this bra over here shows you what you can do with jewellery or with beaded trim. So I got this trim from eBay and it is super sparkly and it was really affordable. It was just like a couple of pounds a metre, but it looks like the most blingy, amazing necklace you've ever seen. So things like this are really nice drapes around the cups. You could also do it along the top edge or along the bottom edge. And it just gives it that something extra that turns, this was just a normal bra from an ordinary uh, lingerie shop and it's turned it into a fabulous burlesque costume. You don't need to spend a fortune and you don't need to go to a special costume maker. You don't need to be a costume maker. I've just taught myself and, and worked out from YouTube all of these different tips. So that's why I thought I would share them with you. And most of these started life as very affordable lingerie. They're not agent provocateur. These are just your basic high street bras that I've jazzed up um, with, again, just craft materials. So anyone can do it and you can make a fabulous costume with a very small budget and not very much technical skill either. So the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is adding paint and glitter. Although you might think they seem like craft materials for posters and that sort of thing and not a costume material, absolutely they have their place in costume and um, but you just have to be a little bit smart about how you use them to make them useful for fabric. So I'm going to bring back my lovely mermaid bra. <laughs> So this was actually just, I think I got from Amazon a costume piece uh, mermaid bra that was like three pounds. They were just plain white plastic. If I show you the back, excuse this state, it's not finished. Um, this is what they looked like when they came to me. So what I've done with these is painted the actual shells, then I added glitter. So the kind of paint that you'll want to use for fabric is actually the same as what I use for plastic and that is acrylic paint. You don't want to use like poster paint or watercolour, anything that's water based because it's going to rub off and then as soon as you sweat it's going to just dissolve that paint and it's going to come off. In theory you could use oil paint however it takes forever to dry so I wouldn't recommend it. 
say if the oil paint for painting beautiful pictures, if you want to paint beautiful costumes, you want acrylic paint. The main thing with acrylic paint is that it's going to show up really vibrantly on your fabric, even if you paint it onto a darker fabric, it, the colours really pop. And also once it dries, it dries kind of shiny like a little layer it's almost like a screen print it's not going to go anywhere and when you're wearing it and you're sweating it's not going to rub off and leave you with horrible paint patches and again there's any number of ways that you can paint onto your bra so you could draw out a pattern and then paint over it using a brush just like you would on a canvas or what you could do is something like what I've done here and what I did was use an old beauty blender so a makeup sponge that I wasn't using anymore and what I did is just dabbed it all over. Now in terms of adding the glitter there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can either mix it directly into the paint and then that means that it's nicely sealed in. It might be a little bit more muted so if that's what you want that method would be perfect. What I did was while my paint was still wet I sprinkled the glitter directly on top so it meant that I got a nice thick layer of glitter and it shows really really shiny on top. If you are going to do that you will find that you've got a lot of loose glitter sitting on top so what you'll want to do is either use a clear nail varnish or just PVA kids glue mixed with some water and paint it all over the top and then that'll just seal down that glitter and it means that Again, it's not going to rub off and fly everywhere as soon as you wear it. It's going to stay exactly where it is. The last thing that I wanted to cover very briefly is a couple of tips for quick release techniques. So that basically means if you're using your bra for a strip tease, making sure that you can get out of it easier or in a maybe a more interesting way if you don't want to do the standard strap, strap, open. So obviously most bras have these little tiny clasps that you hook in there which is fine, you can undo those obviously, but they are prone to getting stuck and can be a little bit difficult to remove on stage, particularly if you're doing something like a fan dance where you might only have one hand to reach around, you're gonna want something that's really easy to remove. Enter trouser hooks, and I'm gonna grab my red bra again because I've already done it with this one. What you want to do is sew your big bar where the little loops are, and then on the other side where your hooks are, you want to take a hammer and it might be difficult to see on camera, but I've hammered these completely flat, these little hooks. So it means that they're not going to get caught on anything. They're not going to interfere with uh, the bigger hook. So then I've got that big hook there. And it just means that once it hooks in, it's super easy to undo. You're not going to get stuck. Now, in terms of changing the straps, again, this is my demo bra because I've done this to this one. Um, I quite like to change a normal bra into a halter neck. So one way is what I've done with this seashell bra. So I added these pearl straps. This needs fixed, so <laughs> bear with me. What I've done here is this is a popper, so a snap button. So I just made a little tab here with some ribbon and sewed one half of the button on here. This should be attached there <laughs> and then I sewed the other half on there so that just snaps in place like that so it means I can just reach behind the back of my neck and flick it with one hand and it falls away. Another option which would be quite nice for quite a slow sultry peel would be to use some ribbon and you would attach it in exactly the same way. So you just stitch your bits of ribbon onto where the straps used to attach and then you would just tie it at the nape of your neck and you could do a nice slow untie with the ribbon and that would be really pretty. So that is everything that I have for you guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're enjoying World Burlesque Day. I know I certainly am. And I know we all can't wait to get back onto the stage and seeing all of your lovely faces in person. So if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to slide in my DMs. I am Ayala Storm on Instagram. And if you have any of your own creations that you've made with any of the tips that I've suggested, please send me pictures and videos. I would love to see them. I hope you have a lovely day, guys. Take care. Bye.